Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I want to tell you guys about the differences in sanding poles. So one might think, well there's not that much difference. I mean some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller, so they sand faster or slower. But there is actually a pretty big difference. So first I want to get into those radius 360 ones. I actually can't find the sanding head, so here's a picture. And this is the sanding head that I use the least, but I do have some favorite tasks for it. A lot of people love these because they're big, they really level out a surface because they're kind of firm, and they cover a lot of ground. But here's the things that I've had difficulty with them is one, you need a paint pole, and that makes them quite heavy. Although you can find different threaded poles that are a lot lighter, but I don't really have any, I just have paint poles. And I find using these overhead to be grueling on my neck and shoulders. In fact, I just can't do it. The other thing I find about these is while yes, they are great for large surfaces, what I do find is that I have difficulty actually feathering an edge. So when I'm trying to burn down my feathered edge right here, which even as smooth as it looks, it does take a couple passes, I find that I can't push hard enough with these. Because the pole is in the center of this broad surface, I find that it spreads the effort out too much. So when you're pushing on this thing, you just can't push down really hard on here. And in order to get it absolutely perfect, I find I have to come back with a sponge and touch it up. What I do really like the Radius 364 is for prepping painted walls. So when I have a lot of surface area to cover and I've got to sand down all the painted walls before applying my next coat of paint, I find this great. And the heft of it helps burn down the old paint pretty well too. Next, we have the Black Widow Sander from Trimtex. So this covers a lot of area and it's got these nice soft foam pads. So this is basically a sanding sponge on a Velcro pad here. And I find this to be a pretty darn good sander. But again, when I'm trying to burn down a feathered edge, I find it doesn't do it as quickly. So again, this is not my preferred sander for everyday use. What I use this specifically for is ceilings. When I have large ceilings skimmed out, this is my go-to because it doesn't leave any scratches and it covers a broad surface. So I just go back and forth across the whole room and I don't even need to look at it with a light because I know I've done a good enough job. I should also mention that this is really light and that's the other reason I use it on ceilings. I mean, it's just super light. My neck and shoulders don't take such a beating with that one. Now let's get to my old faithful, my favorite, the better than ever super sander. So this is the one that I wouldn't be without. If I had to choose only one, this would be it. It's reasonably light, not as light as the Black Widow, but why I like it is I actually like the narrowness of it. So this is just paper and I use this for sanding my first coat and it really planes things down nicely, say if there's a fair bit of humps in your first coat. So it's very good for burning down liftoffs and leveling things out nicely. And for finish coat, what I use is I use foam-backed sandpaper on the Better Than Ever Super Sander. This foam-backed sandpaper is a lot like the Black Widow. As long as you sand properly, it doesn't leave any scratches. And also, because this is so narrow, when I'm burning down finished edges, so I can put extra pressure on this and it's more concentrated in the one area. So it's just a couple of pushes and it's gone. Whereas the other ones don't actually do it properly. I also find that even though this is narrower than the other sanders, it does not take long to cover ground. And the fact that I can't burn down the feathered edges as well with this one compared to this one makes them even out pretty much in my opinion. So I usually go to this one because it's what I'm most familiar with. The narrowness also makes it nice for getting into corners because, you know, your control is just not far away from the edges of the pole. So you just have more control when using it too. I also find that out of all of them, this is the one that leaves the flattest finish. Because it's narrow, it doesn't miss voids and stuff. It seems to find its way into everything and flatten everything out the best. So if you guys are looking for any of those tools, I'll put the links to them in the description below. And anyways, that's Sanding Poles 101. Each one of them has a purpose. I wouldn't want to be without any of them. I just prefer some over the others. And thanks for watching. I hope that helps clear things up and helps you make your choice in sandpaper and all that sort of stuff. Remember, if you can find this foam back stuff on a roll, this is the stuff to get. Lasts a long time and leaves the best finish out of anything else. Anyways, thanks for watching you guys. Hope you got something. Till the next video.